Welcome to yet another joyful occasion at Paducah Community College, the 62nd graduation ceremonies. Please remain standing as the Paducah Community College Chorus, under the direction of Jeff Jordan, sings our national anthem. Gentlemen, please remove your mortar boards. Ladies, you may do so if you wish. The national anthem has special significance for us today, this 50th anniversary of victory in Europe. We all do remain free and grateful to those who gave so much so that we could be here today. It is my privilege now to introduce to you some special guests. In our audience, we have Clyde and Linnell Boyles. Mr. and Mrs. Boyles, are the donors of the Phelps Award, which is a prestigious award given to the outstanding teacher as voted by the administration at Paducah Community College. Mr. and Mrs. Boyles, thank you. And former law partners of our commencement speaker, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Whitlow and Mark Whitlow, thank you for being here. And now the platform guests, and if you would hold your applause to, until all have been introduced. United States District Judge Thomas B. Russell, our commencement speaker. The Paducah Junior College and Community College Board of Trustees. Chairperson, Marshall Niemer. Vice Chairperson, Velma Boley Carlton. Secretary, Ann Denton. Executive Committee at Large, Fred Paxton. County Judge Executive, Danny Orzine. Howard Arant, William Dibert, Ann Gwynn, Judge Jeffrey Hines, H.C. Mathis, Jr., Dr. Shirley Menendez, Dr. Wally Montgomery, Ken Wheeler, representing the faculty, Sherry Anderson, representing the students, Chris Loftus, the deans of Paducah Community College, Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Barbara Vesey, Dean of Student Affairs, Sandra Tucker, Dean of Business Affairs, John Carrico, We thank all of you for your selfless contributions to this college. Chris Loftus, 
the 1994-95 first vice president of the Student Government Association will bring greetings on behalf of her classmates. Friends, family, and faculty, welcome. On behalf of the 1995 graduating class of Paducah Community College, we want to express our appreciation. To our family and friends, thank you for your support and for your encouragement. Without you, we may have succeeded, but with you, the journey was much easier and much more rewarding. We will not forget the sacrifices you gave so that we could attain our goal. To the faculty, we value the time and effort that you have given. As we apply the knowledge gained here at PCC, we will remember you. Tonight, as we say goodbye to Paducah Community College, we not only take with us an education, but also we take, a, take friendships. For some of us, the bonds formed while studying together will be lifelong. Whether our plans is to continue our formal education, education or to practice our professions, the experience gained at PCC will be a hallmark to which each of you have contributed. Thank you. I am very proud of the faculty at Paducah Community College. They hold excellent credentials, make presentations at national conferences, pub publish in professional journals, and they are considered leaders in their academic discipline. But I am also proud of the fact that they have cared for you, the students, as individuals. They have wanted to see you achieve they have wanted to see you here at graduation tonight. I know that you can bring that faculty person to mind. So graduates, family, friends, join me in paying tribute to those who made tonight possible, the faculty of Paducah Community College. United States District Court Judge Thomas B. Russell was nominated for the federal post by President Clinton and took the oath of office in October of 1944. This was the first time in history that a federal judge had taken the oath of office in Paducah. Judge Russell is only the third federal judge in modern times to be from Western Kentucky. He earned his bachelor's degree from Western Kentucky University and then graduated from the University of Kentucky Law School in 1970. From that time until his nomination was confirmed by the United States Senate, Judge Russell was a law partner in the firm of Whitlow, Roberts, Houston, and Russell here in Paducah. Judge Russell has been president of both the McCracken County and the Kentucky Bar Associations. He has chaired several committees for the American Bar Association and has served as president of the Kentucky Defense Council. During his 25 years of legal service, our speaker has served as a fellow to both the American College of Trial Lawyers and the American Bar Foundation. The people of Western Kentucky have come to know and respect Judge Russell as a man of integrity, honesty, and intense dedication to his profession. Judge Russell has worked for the people of Western Kentucky as a member of the executive board of the Four Rivers Council of Boy Scouts of America, the McCracken County Red Cross, the Rotary Club of Paducah, and many other civic organizations. 
Now we have the privilege of having him serve us as a United States District Court Judge. All of us celebrate in his accomplishments. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming our commencement speaker, United States District Court Judge Thomas B. Russell. President O'Hara, members of the board, faculty, honored guests, graduates, and friends. Uh, I thank you for asking me to be here this evening. If it makes the graduates feel any better or maybe worse, I can promise you that when I graduated from college, there was not one person in my graduating class that ever thought that I would give a graduating talk. <laughs> I assume I'm here because I see eye to eye with your president. <laughs> It is my pleasure to be here this evening, and I'm both honored and surprised by it. For those of you who do not attend school here, they have a magazine called The Signal. And I was pleased to read about the announcement for this year's graduation speaker. The headlines read, and let me read it to you, Bruce Willis to speak at this year's graduation. At first, I was a little bit worried about that, hoping that I could fulfill those expectations. Then using the reasoning that we're taught as lawyers, I became very happy because I realized for 26 years I've been married to Demi Moore. So it turned, <laughs> it turned out to be a pretty good deal. I was really uncertain as to what was expected of a graduation speaker. I called uh, President O'Hara and asked, what should be the topic on which I should address, and how long do you speak? President Harrod was a lot of help. Uh, he said, you can speak on anything you want to, and no speaker was too short. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that that uh, last line was, a, was not intended the way I exactly took it, uh, President Harrod. Although I believe if he didn't cheat and wear those cowboy boots, we'd be about the same height, I'm not sure. <laughs> Other than that, the university has been very good about arranging the details. Uh, they called early in the game and asked me uh, what size gown I wore and cap and made those arrangements. In my profession as a judge, the size of the gown was rather easy. We wear a robe in the courtroom. We do not normally wear a hat. A true story, they called and said, what size ca uh, cap do you wear? And I didn't know, and my secretary, Kelly, went next door to the clerk's office. She got a tape measure and she came back and measured my head, took, wrote it down and took the tape measure back to the clerk's office. She came back in with a little smile on her face and I said, what's so funny? She said, well, the clerk's office said they're gonna measure your head in three months and see if it's the same size. <laughs> uh, it's been a rather agonizing time for me uh, trying to think about what to speak to a uh, graduate, graduating class about. I'm afraid I spent more time agonizing and should have spent more time writing on what I was going to be doing. Only a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Fred Paxton about it, and he told me about the best speech he ever heard at a PCC graduation. It was several years ago when the college was still downtown, and Burt Combs was a speaker. It was in the summer, and it was hot, very, very hot. And everyone was miserable that was there, so Fred told me. And he said that finally, after what had been a very long program, Burt Combs stood up and looked at the graduating class and said, it's very hot in here. I want to congratulate you on graduation and wish you the best of luck in the future. And he sat down. Uh, Fred said that he had a rousing applause and everyone loved it. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a, uh, there's a second page to that story. The dean was not satisfied with the length of the talk and invited uh, Governor Combs to return the next year to give a longer talk. So at the risk of not, having a, not wanting a second invite, uh, I, I think I'll talk a little while, but I'll guarantee to be briefly. Uh, Fred gave me some more advice as we were walking in. He punched me on the shoulder just as we were walking in, in the door. and He said, if you lose your place, don't start over. <laughs> Those of you who may be expecting a, a long talk, uh, I'm afraid, will be disappointed. I understand that it's the job of a commencement speaker to challenge and inspire the graduates. 
I wish I had those wonderful words to do just that. I wish I had the eloquence of tongue to excite you and energize you to action that would make everyone very proud. However, I realize that my words are of little importance. I'm here merely as a, merely as a symbol of what you have achieved on this day. The truth is that you all, all have the ability to succeed. Some of that comes from what you've learned at this very fine institution. Some of it comes from what you knew before you came here and learned from family and friends. When and how you use that information will predict your success, not what I say. But I would like to talk with you a little bit about what you're going to do with this acquired information and how you might put it to use in your lives. In a sense, you've all achieved a degree of success by being here this evening. All of you have sacrificed time, money, and effort to make this journey of graduation. For some, it was a difficult and hard-fought journey. For others, the obstacles have been less severe and the task has been less arduous. However, no matter the path, all of you have completed the task. With this formal educational success, you provided yourself with an opportunity you could continue to succeed. You provided, you've provided yourself with an opportunity to grow and with an opportunity to, to continue to improve. From a formal educational perspective, all of you are much better today than you were two years ago. All of you have had some wonderful professors. Some of those professors are among this rather handsome lot that sits over to your, to your left in front of us today, this evening. And most likely, probably despite the resistance from many of you, these professors have exposed you to new ideas. They have expanded your horizons. Many will tell you that life is really tough out there in the real world after you get out of school. That jobs are difficult to find, that the American dream of economic success being guaranteed by education and hard work is difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. I'm not here to tell you they're wrong. They're probably right. But you know, it's always been tough out there. Good jobs have always been difficult to find. And the American dream has been elusive at best. When I look back, I realize that my parents went through the Great Depression and World War II. I didn't, and you didn't. Obstacles and opportunities are always present, no matter the times. However, with times, obstacles only change names. And no matter the times, opportunities are what you make of them. Successes are begun every day. Your education has given you the opportunity in these times, even on this day, to begin your success. Sure, life is tough. Success is difficult to achieve. Your success may depend upon preparedness, it may depend upon ability, and it even may depend upon a little luck. Nevertheless, all have failed who did not try. The only path to success is through effort. My first thought to you is that your formal education has given you that opportunity to succeed. Trust that education, expand on that education, and most of all, use that education. However, there's additional knowledge that you possess that will make your lives happier and make this place and this world a better place in which to live. This additional knowledge was not a prescribed course and may not have come to you through formal education. Some of it you undoubtedly have learned here at Paducah Community College. Some of it has been taught to you by your family and friends who gather around you this evening to celebrate this time with you. Before becoming a judge, I was a lawyer for 26 years. As a lawyer, I was involved in all types of cases. Some of those cases were big and some were small. On occasion, I was fortunate enough to win, and at those times, I necessarily reaped the rewards of winning. But you know, those are not the cases that I remember most. Monetary rewards were never 
my biggest fee. The fees that I remember most from my practice happened to be two chess pies. I remember a hug. I remember a handshake and a grasp of the shoulder. And I remember a tear. Those fees were paid to me not for winning. Those fees were paid to me for caring. Like all of you, I've never taken a course in caring, but I realize now that it must be life's most important lesson. It was, not, it was taught to me by others who cared, by family, by friends, by professors who listened and helped. They cared. While nothing you have learned will guarantee you economic success, many things that you have been taught by family, friends, and professors will reap you greater rewards. I suggest to you that caring about others is one of life's greatest lessons. And whether you realize it or not, you have been taught many ways to show that you do care. And you've been taught them for a long, long time. Let me just mention a few of the simple things that you all know that show that you care. Listen to others. Be polite. Help older people. Do not take more than you can eat. Hold hands. Put back things like you found them. Say please. Say thank you. Pretty simple, aren't they? But think what a wonderful world this would be if we all held hands every once in a while, if we put back things like we found them, and if we said please and thank you. We've talked about these benefits of getting a formal education and using it. I've tried to say that unless you care about others, then you're wasting that education by not allowing others to benefit from it. Finally, I would have one additional thought to you graduates. That is, be a dreamer. Do not be afraid to take a chance. Think about what you want out of life and then do it. By encouraging you to dream, I'm not suggesting that you be foolhardy. Rather, I encourage you to have a vision. This university was started by several people who had a dream. Without that dream, none of us would be here this evening. Successful businesses are started every day by people who allow themselves to dream. I have a friend that I've known for several years. He ran track when he was in college. After he graduated from college, he went to Stanford Law School. And while he was there, he went back to his track coach and they went to a gentleman who was in the business school at Stanford and said, we would like, I, I would like to build an athletic shoe. I think we can do it. Probably some of you are wearing that dream tonight. It's called Nike. All successful charitable activities are the results of dreams of people who cared. Dreams help you set goals. All my life I dreamed what I'd like to be and what I'd like to achieve. And I'm not foolish. I must admit that most of them I never achieved, I've never made. However, those, those dreams have made my life better. They've made my life more meaningful for me. And I hope they've made my life more meaningful for others who are around me. What I'm tempting to say to you is, do not be afraid to dream the impossible. You might make it happen. You now have the benefit of a college education. It provides wonderful opportunities to you. But do not let education go to your head. Do not take yourself too seriously. In my job, my current job as a, as a federal judge, it's very easy to take yourself seriously. In the position, I'm in a place where everyone says, yes, sir, all people laugh at my jokes, especially lawyers. It's a, it's a position by the very definition of it, commands respect. Very early on, I, I found that, uh, that I had to watch it. When I practiced in the law office, I practiced in the office. Suddenly, I mean, I have stationery that says Chambers of Thomas B. Russell. There was a big difference. I had a friend who called up and asked my secretary, what's the difference? We couldn't decide that there was a difference. That same friend frequently picks me up in the parking lot outside and we go jogging every day. The same day he called back and said, I'll pick you up at the parking chambers. <laughs> he kind of put things in perspective to me. My son, who's a freshman in college, returned from school over Thanksgiving, sitting next to me in church. He punched me on the shoulder and he said, Daddy, you know what you call lawyers whose IQ is less than 25? I said, no, son. He said, your honor. 
So I guess he had a way of putting things in perspective to me. So when I tell you, do not let education go to your head, remember it's still up to you to achieve and go and do. And when you do so, remember to care about yourself and others. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, if I could borrow a few words from Burke Combs, I would say congratulations on your graduation and may you have the best of luck in the future. And to borrow from myself, God bless, happy dreams, and thank you. Thank you, Judge Russell. All of us thank you for your inspiring words. And we are all pleased at your achievement, which brings honor to all of us, and a fine example to those of us who live in Western Kentucky. Your remarks were not only inspiring, but lengthy enough that we will not have to have you back And uh, afterwards, I will take off the cowboy boots, and we'll see who's the shorter one. <laughs> Thank you again, Judge, for a fine speech. Will the candidates please rise? Mr. President, I present the candidates for graduation and I certify on behalf of the faculty that they have successfully completed all of the requirements for their respective degrees. The first row of graduates may proceed to the stage. All others may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, as the names of the graduates are read, Please note that those graduating with distinction have achieved a grade point average of 3.4 to 3.6. Those graduating with high distinction have earned a 3.6 or higher. Students wearing the gold stoles are members of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Receiving the Associate in Arts Gina B. Beck. Barbara Ann Blackwell. Suzanne Brockwell. Melissa Ann Burnett. Loshanna Willett Carter. Brenda Cherry. Kathleen A. Clemency. <clears throat> Emily Renee Connor. April Creighton. <laughs> Carol A. Creason. <laughs> Amy J. Greiner. Marsha Lee Horahan. And Marsha is graduating with a 4.0. Larry B. Irvin. Daryl R. New. Michelle Lee Purcell. Diana Michelle Ray. Michael Lynn Riley. Tammy S. Smock. 
Sansaria J. Troop. The Associate in Science, Sean Stephen Abel. Joseph Christopher Bone. Tamara Michelle Dunaway. Marilyn Sue Garrett. Victoria L. Russell. Peter Albert Schmidt. Marlena Lilani Swinford. Betsy Lee Yandel. Receiving the Associate in Applied Science, Accounting Technology, Juanita S. Jones. In Business Technology, Management, Dana M. Carter. Theresa M. Hendricks. Glenn Miller, Jr. Carla A. Smith. In real estate, Claudia D. Fox. Communications Technology, Edna Lucille Edmiston. Computer Information Systems Programming Option, Edith Carol Jackson. And Ms. Jackson is also receiving a degree in office administration. In office administration, Sandra L. Humphrey. Donna Jean Johnson. Charlotte Lee Kellett. Dana K. Miller. Brenda G. Roby. Sheila Ann Salka. Nursing, Cindy Lou Allarden. Mary Arnett. Lynn Bradley Baker. Sonia D. Barrett. Kanita Blanchard. Elizabeth Ann Blythe. Jana Lynn Boone. Angela K. Bolton. Patricia G. Brown. Tammy J. Bruce. Deborah Castleberry. Lisa Diane Chandler. Anita S. Christian. Linda Susan Courtney. <laughs> Mary Louise Kurtzinger. And Miss Kurtzinger is graduating with a 4.0. Christina H. DeFeria. Beverly Ann Dick. Jonna Francine Dirks. Marcy L. Duncan. Kimberly Dawn Edwards. Gail L. Green Evans. 
Janice M. Freilix. Donna J. Freiberger. Anita Renee Gibson. Lisa J. Galland. Carmen Gail Gordon. Sevilla Lynn Gorey. Tammy Jo Harris. Sheila Spears Hawkins. Michael L. Haygood. Rebecca Ann Henson. Connie L. Harrington. Sandra A. Hobbs. Tammy Michelle Jackson. Tanegra Jackson. Linda Lee Janice. Lynn Jones. Myra Lockard King. Alice Elizabeth Landreth. Julie Lane. E. Crystal Brooks Loftus. M Mark A. Luker. Cheryl Lynn Mason. Kimberly Mathis. Terry Glenn McKendry. Melissa K. Freilich Smedley. Melody Ann Montero. Trevor Shane Munsell. Ronald Knoll. Patricia A. Newberry. Linda E. Norsworthy. Deanna Hunter Orlowski. Sherry L. Odie. Tracy R. Patton. Marsha L. Penrod. Harry Ray Reynolds, Jr. Teresa Darlene Rice. Kathy J. Rollins. Karen Elaine Cimarero. Carol Ann Sira. Tammy Jo Shane. Maureen Helen Shelby. Lori Ross Simmons. Valerie Jean Solomon. Terry W. Starnes. Terry Lynn Stevenson. Tammy K. Souter. Scarlett Lee Swift. Carla Turley Sanan. Melissa Carol Tarver. 
Loretta Thompson. Francis Lee Jennings Throgmartin. Della Benton Tucker. Marsha Chris Turner. Cynthia A. Walker. Robin J. Watson. Tracy M. Wells. Judy Carol Willett. Lily J. Young. Physical Therapist Assistant, Linda R. Belcher. Angela Michelle Dukes. Wendy Denise Faulkner. Deborah J. Gordon. Christy Lynn Young Guy. Philip Royce Jones. Shauna Lynn Pogue. Gary D. Shelton. Timothy Allen Wilson. Richard K. Zipsy. Let's hear it for all of them. Will the graduates please rise? By virtue of the power vested in me by the University of Kentucky and the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I confer upon you the associate degree. You may now move your tassels to the left side. Please be seated. At this point in the program, it is my honor to recognize a few individuals among the very, very many who have moved this institution toward greatness. First, earlier this evening, at our honors convocation, the students recognized the teacher of the year, and that teacher is Connie Heflin. As I mentioned earlier, we have a prestigious award that has been given for the past several years as a result of the generosity of Clyde and Linnell Boyles in recognition and in memory of Mrs. Boyles' parents. It is known as the Phelps Endowment Award for Excellence in Teaching. It's a surprise award. The recipient is not told who he or she will be. 
And so it keeps us all in suspense. But we learned a lesson this evening, certainly I did, and we kept that surprise. And we failed to remember that the recipient has had a long-standing engagement away from the campus. <laughs> but we are going to present it anyway. The award is a very important one because it goes to the individual who has demonstrated the best qualities of the teaching profession. And here at PCC, that's a particularly prestigious award because we have so many outstanding teachers. The recipient receives a cash award of $1,000, which we will keep safe for him, and has also afforded the opportunity of purchasing library materials for his or her department. The 1995 recipient is Dr. James Meeks. I will tell you this about Jim Meeks. Jim Meeks does it all. He's above all an inspiring teacher. He conducts relevant and challenging research and encourages his students to do likewise. He writes, he publishes, he guides students of all ages from elementary school to those of us who are in the process of designing Kentucky's state-of-the-art engineering and science facility. He's active in his profession. He holds leadership roles in regional, state, national levels. And last year, he brought the Kentucky Academy of Science here and hosted it. Their annual meeting was held in Paducah. He's an inspiration to all of us, and in particular to his students. And Jim Meeks is the epitome of the Renaissance man that this prestigious award stands for. And we'll see to it that Jim knows that you were here to recognize him. Each year, I have the opportunity to select from the college family individuals to receive the president's medallion. The award provides me with a way of recognizing individuals have, who have moved us toward greatness this year there are two awards. The first goes to Jeff Jordan. the way they are. I couldn't see if this was his medallion or someone else's. <laughs> Stay just a moment. When Jeff came to PCC, we were offering one music course. Now we offer symphonic music, history and sociology of rock music, guitar, several theory courses, university chorus, and much more. Literally thousands of people have come to this college to learn from and participate with this energetic and talented man. Because of him, our music program is respected and flourishing. And to this day, Jeff Jordan remains the only person in my 27 years in the business who, during an interview, became so enthusiastic about the subject that he got up marched back and forth in front of uh, my desk and demonstrated how he would teach a given concept, and he did it several times. I don't even know if he remembers doing that, but it certainly impressed me. <laughs> and I figured we needed some, someone with that energy to come to PCC. I told him of my dream of making University Chorus a reality and of bringing, using music to bring thousands of people to this campus, and he told me, consider it done, and it has been done. He's everywhere. He works for the College for Living program for mentally challenged individuals ages 16 to 60. He teaches an elder hostel for students over 60. And he conducts the Battle of the Bands, and I must admit, for people a lot younger than 60. 
It seems that we are always engaged in something about music. He asked me to keep this short, and I'll skip two paragraphs and simply tell you this, that he is a perennial nominee for the Outstanding Teacher Award at PCC, and he says this, I love to teach, and I want my students to enjoy the experience as much as I do. Please join me in congratulating this exhilarating individual, Jeff Jordan. Nineteen ninety four was a watershed year for Paducah Community College. It will forever be remembered as, of course, the year that we raised eight million dollars, but also and more importantly for the year in which we came to know and believe that we can accomplish anything. All of us who work here have always suspected that we were capable of greatness. And all of us knew that this community held fond feelings for us. What we lacked was simply the catalyst to bring all of that out and ignite it in us. It's always dangerous to single out one individual when so many hundreds of individuals made this year so extraordinary. But I'm going to do so nonetheless. For while hundreds con contributed their time, their effort, their money, their talent, to the engineering program and what it meant and means to us. One person can be seen head and shoulders above us all. That person is Fred Paxton. All of us know Mr. Paxton as president of the Paxton Media Group, and we know him for his civic contributions. But what I want you to know about this man is he, that he gave us something greater than money, greater than advice, greater than hard work. He gave us all of those things. But he lent to us the most valuable of all things, his reputation for integrity, for respectability, for truthfulness. And it was because of him that we were able to get close to the seats of power in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and have our story told. All of us worked hard, and all of you worked hard, and all this board that you see before you worked hard, but I am as certain that without Fred Paxton it would not have happened as I am that I am standing here before you today. Mr. Paxton, on behalf of all of us in this community, I thank you for giving us the confidence that we can accomplish anything. Thank you. At the end of the year, each year, some of our people leave us for retirement or resignation, and one very special person has, is leaving us after this ceremony this evening, and that is Diane Langsfield. Diane has done some marvelous things at our institution and has, and has helped so many students, and we will miss Diane. Also, a, a bittersweet moment in that a friend of the college did pass away during 1994, someone who remembered us fondly, and we will remember fondly, and that is Mr. Joe Rosenfield. Mr. Rosenfield was a generous supporter of this institution, and as you may have read, left us $1 million to make this a better institution. Lastly, it is my, I have this opportunity to challenge the graduates. Fortunately for me, all of the words have been said. I have left for you a gift in the folder that you received. 
that summarizes the words that I would want to say to you if I were to take the time, and I hope that you will read those words, you graduates, and I hope that you will take those words to heart and frame them. There are about 24 thoughts in that saying that you have in your folder. The last one urges you to be happy. If I could add any words to the fine words of Judge Russell, I would say to, for you to strive to be happy. For you are entering a world that is full of change and where change is the only constant. But we want you to know that PCC will always be here for you. We know that individuals change their profession seven or eight times in this world today. But PCC will always be here for you. In fact, I suppose it was that change that brought you to us in the first place. But my challenge to you is that you choose to be happy. And if I can offer any words, it is this, that the greatest happiness, the greatest joy is in caring and doing things for others. I will close with words that are attributed to a young man from Italy. His name was Francis. He came from a little town of Assisi. And whether or not he spoke these words, he certainly could have. And in them rings the thought that it is in doing for others that we find our greatest joy. And since we do not know if he actually said the words, I will take a bit of liberty and change one word in his remarks from peace to joy. For I believe that peace is somewhat of a passive word, a wonderful word, but joy includes peace. Joy is an action word. Joy shows exhilaration, and I hope that in your life you find exhilaration and I believe that that joy can best be found through helping others. And the words of Francis of Assisi go like this. Lord, make me the channel of your joy. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, forgiveness. Where there is discord, reconciliation. Where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is sadness, joy, where there is darkness, your light. If we give, we are made rich. If we forget ourselves, we find peace. If we forgive, we find forgiveness, and if we die, we receive eternal resurrection. I wish you joy. Please rise and join the community college chorus in singing, My Old Kentucky Home.
Please remain standing as the recessional passes. We ask you to join us in the Student Center for a reception. It appears that the weather has blessed us once again and the rains have stayed away. At least it appears that way. This commencement is completed. 